Feathering is gone, but not forgotten. Well, it's not all gone. It's just not allowing you to feather thousands of frames all at once because Cyril wasn't designed to do that. Feathering in Cyril is meant to do feathering for just a handful of frames. Feathering thousands of frames has caused slowness in processing as well as lots of memory issues for lots of people. So after months of discussions and troubleshooting, I've decided to remove the feathering option from the Nastronomy Smart Telescope pre-processing script. And like I said, it's not all gone. So if you batch, the individual batch files will still be feathered when you put them together. So for example, if you have 1000 frames and you batch them in groups of 100, you'll have 10 frames which will be combined and feathered together. Now that graphic was simpler than what most smart telescopes do where they spiral out and create mosaics, which is a bit of a pain when it comes to stacking like this because you get overlaps where you normally wouldn't get overlaps when you're just doing paneled mosaics. This is especially weird because around the edges, the single noise ratio is much lower than anywhere else in the frame. So they tend to look weird, especially the overlaps there from one frame to another. And Feathering did help, but feathering in Cyril wasn't meant to do that. The workaround here would be to do a background extraction every single time and try smaller batch frames. And you can go as little as 50 frames per batch. If you still see weird, ugly overlaps, try stacking without drizzle. Although drizzle can help you retrieve some data, it wasn't meant to be used in this sense either. So drizzle can actually exacerbate noise, especially around the edges where the signal to noise ratio is not as good as everywhere else. So, if you're seeing those ugly overlaps, background extraction isn't helping, lower feathering or lower batch count isn't working, try without drizzle and see if that makes a difference. And if you still have issues after that, please reach out in the comments below. Ask me on our Discord server, which is probably the easiest way to get to me. Ask on Patreon, on Buy Me A Coffee, and if you're a YouTube member, you can reach out to me there as well. Just pretty much any platform except for emails because I have a really hard time maintaining support requests in emails because it's just bogged down by everything else that I get. With that said, a huge thank you to all of my supporters on Patreon, Buy Me A Coffee, and on YouTube. I truly appreciate you all. If you'd like to support me and the work that I do, check me out on those platforms where members also get to test the scripts early and have more of a say in how these scripts shape out before the release. And there's also a 2026 astrophotography calendar that I released that you can buy from shop.nastronomy.com to support me. So let's talk about the changes. So going from top to bottom, the first huge change you'll notice is that now we're requiring local Gaia in order to do mosaics. Previously, the script defaulted to online Gaia if the local Gaia wasn't installed. And although that was a nice solution, the online database goes down so often that when people start doing this and start doing plate solving, it just doesn't work because the database is down. So if you don't have local Gaia, don't worry, the script will still work. It'll just use a global star alignment instead of plate solving. So what that means is that you won't be able to do mosaics, but everything else will get cropped down to a reference frame. So it'll be a much smaller crop. The next update is small. So if you have any of these five supported telescopes, the script will now detect the telescope type from the first fits file from your lights directory. And if one exists, if it matches, it'll switch the frame for you or switch the telescope for you. Otherwise it'll default to the top one, which is the C star S30. And with that said, the next update is that this script now fully supports Celestron Origin after their October 2025 firmware update. Celestron Origin data pre-October 2025 was missing some header information that was needed for mosaics. So if you still have that data, you can still stack. You just won't be able to do a mosaic unless you're using data after October. The next update is that now all operating systems can batch. Previously, the batching option here was only available or only used by Windows users. And that went from 100 to 2000 frames because Windows has a limit of 2048 total frames. But after multiple requests from Patreon patrons and Buy Me A Coffee supporters, this script now allows you to batch on Mac and Linux as well, except the maximum batching you can do there is 25,000 files. So if you have 20,000 files and you set this to 20,000, it won't batch, it'll just do everything in one go. The user interface still defaults to 2000 because that's the Windows limit, but if you're on a Mac or Linux, you can switch that up. On Windows, you're maxed out at 2000 and making the UI update to the maximum of whatever your operating system is completely slipped my mind until somebody commented on it on Facebook earlier. So in the next patch, I'll make it so that if you're on a Mac or Linux, it'll default to 25,000 max. And if you're on Windows, it'll be 2000. And right next to that, you'll also get a number of the fits files that was detected in the lights directory. And along with that, this script will ignore JPEGs. So if you have JPEGs in that directory, if you copied everything over from the C star hard drive, they'll be ignored. So you're okay there. But 
if you're also copying over the stacked files from the CSR, from Dwarf, or whatever else telescope you're using, remove those because if those are FITS files, they'll get included in the conversion and the script will eventually fail because it won't be able to do a bunch of these processes. No update to the registration section, but right below it was the feathering section, and I talked quite a bit about that earlier in this video, so I'll skip talking about that here. Let's move on. In the filter section, we have two new filters. We have star count and background, as requested by one YouTube member and I believe one other person on Buy Me A Coffee. Along with the extra filter, we have now gone from sigma values to percentages. We had a little bit of a discussion and we decided that percentages is easier for people to understand. A lot of people were confused about sigma values and I have kept explaining what those are. And I think so percentages are just easier to read. But if you have feedback, if you have questions, do let me know in the comments below or on the various platforms that I mentioned earlier. The SPCC section hasn't changed, but again, as I said earlier, you no longer have access to switch between local Gaia and online Gaia. So that option was removed. It'll just be local Gaia. And if you don't have local Gaia, SPCC will not work. And finally, there is a checkbox at the very bottom to check for the black frames bug. Previously, Cyril randomly would generate black frames if you drizzled and Cyril does believe that that issue is now fixed. But I didn't want to remove that check completely, just gone because it did help a lot of people. So now it's an option. So if you run the script and in the console log, you see an error that says normalization error, please check this box and run it again because there's a chance that the bug still exists, so this will help you bypass it. And if for some reason you check this box and it still doesn't work, let me know and so that we can document it and either apply a fix to this check or if I have to, I'll put it back in permanently in the next patch again and maybe report it to the serial desk to take a look again. And if nothing else works, just turn off Drizzle and try again. You won't get this error. And I do recommend watching the entire demo because I believe that it can help answer a lot of questions that you may have as you try to use the script. So I think it's helpful to watch the whole thing through. But if there's anything that I didn't cover in the demo, please let me know. And I also want to mention that the number of support requests that I've been getting over the last couple of months has increased quite a bit. And it's becoming a little bit harder for me to reply on time. But I do eventually get to everything. Unless you email me, then it probably got sunk down somewhere down below. So reach out to me on Discord, Patreon, buy me a coffee, YouTube, and I'll be sure to get back to you. So please have some patience. And if you do know the answer, try and help each other out. I would greatly appreciate it. Let's get to the demo. All right, let's take a look at this script. Before I even start, I just want to mention that if you need to get the logs here, you need to export it and send it to me some way. It's this little button here. It says export the logs, it's a little download button. It'll give you a .log file. You save that on your computer and you send that to me either on Discord, which is the easiest way to get to me. You can also reach out to me on Patreon, buy me a coffee, and even Facebook. Just don't email me. I have been getting a lot of those and it's really hard to keep track of them. We're gonna look at the new versions. So if you don't already have this installed, you go to scripts, get scripts, and then search for just NAS and you'll see my two scripts. And this one is the Nastronomy Smart Telescope PP.py. So you make sure it's checked and you click on apply. If you already have this installed, you don't have to do anything. The next time you restart Serial, it will automatically update for you if it hasn't already. So before we open the script, you wanna make sure that your home directory is set. So I already have this set to my, my test directory of Serial S50 Mosaic, which is this directory here. It has a the only important folder here is the lights folder and has 445 lights frames, dot fit frames from an S50 uh, over a year ago. Uh, it also has an old folder. This is going to be ignored. This is just my old test data. You can ignore that as well. Just the lights folder. If you are if you are not in a directory with a lights folder inside, the script will warn you and it'll try to get you to switch. Uh, that's That has been the same functionality since version one. Okay, so you set the working directory and then you go to scripts, Python scripts, pre-processing, and you click on Astronomy Smart Telescope PP.py. And before we go into the UI, I just want to mention, you can ignore the top part because I restarted this twice, that I'm now logging some frequently asked questions here that I've been getting quite a bit. And you also notice that it has now detected the telescope. So that's actually one of the updates that you'll see right away is that if you if your lights directory has the first fits file is one of these five telescopes, it'll automatically pick for you so you don't have to do that. It saves you like half a second basically. And 
So, all right, let's go back to the top here. The top two parts hasn't changed, but the local Gaia status is now up here instead of down here under post stacking. And you'll notice that you also can't change the catalog, the Gaia catalog, either local or online. And that's because this script now requires you to use local Gaia in order to plate solve and do mosaics. If you don't have local Gaia, don't worry, the script will still work for you, but it will not mosaic. It will use a reference frame and it'll use a global star alignment and crop down. So you'll notice this very quickly when you start stacking and you don't see a mosaic anymore. So download Gaia, install it locally. If you don't know how, it's just basically going to scripts, Python scripts core, serial catalog installer, and install both the astrometry and the SPCC catalog. My buddy Rich at Deep Space Astro has a whole video on this particular script, so check that out when you get the chance if you have questions. As of this version, Celestron Origin is fully supported, but only if you use the firmware that was released this past October, so October 2025. That's because before that, Celestron Origin was missing some header data that the script looks for. So now they have it, so now it's supported. And people have asked me whether Dwarf Mini will work. So Dwarf Mini will work, you can select Dwarf 3 and use that. The only thing is that I wouldn't recommend that you do SPCC because I didn't look into any of that. I don't have any of that data. So if you have the Dwarf Mini and you want to send me some data to play with, reach out. Calibration frames are still the same. You know, if you have a darks, flats, and biases directory, make sure those are there before you check these boxes. These also take master frames. So if you have just one dark frame and one flats frame and one biases frame, just enter those one and it'll treat them as a master frame. Cleanup files are still the same. It'll clean up as it goes. If you are batching, it'll automatically clean up whether you select this box or not. Now to the optional pre-processing steps. Max files per batch on Windows is locked at a maximum of 2000, but on Linux and Macs, I have, I have set it to 25,000. So I think based on some of my beta testers, 25,000 is more than enough. It'll also tell you the number of lights fits files that it, direct, that it detected in the lights directory. So this is 445. So it gives you an idea of how many batches you may want to do. So the minimum you can do is 50. So if you do 50, it'll be 445 divided by 50. So it'll do about 90 or sorry, nine batches. But you know, well, I'm going to leave it at 500 so that it doesn't do multiple batches. We'll do background extraction and drizzle, these hasn't changed. And then on filters, we have two new options. We have background and star crown count. This was recommended by a YouTube member, so or requested by YouTube member, so I put that here. Now going down a little bit more, SPCC still exists based on your telescope. So, you know, ZWO has the no filter or the LP broadband. I'm just gonna uncheck this because I don't care about it right now. It'll, it hasn't changed since version one, this functionality. The other thing is that I now have the black frames bug check as an option. In the previous versions, if you drizzled, if you click this button, it automatically checked for black frames because drizzle registration in Serial used to generate black frames for many people and it would error during stacking because you can't normalize a black frame. So now it's optional. It's because Serial believes that, or Serial does believe that, this issue is resolved. If you are stacking and you get an error that says normalization failed, click this button and then retry it again. So for this run, for this demo run, I'm going to keep this off. And I'm gonna click on save presets. This functionality hasn't changed since the last version where it saves it into a JSON file. Going back to serial, that's basically all I need. So I'm going to check cleanup files and then I'll click on run and I let it run and then if you look at my directory here, you'll see that it has a process directory and it's doing all these things. So I'm gonna let it go and then we'll check back really soon. All right, that's pretty quick. So it finished, uh, so let me do this and then do an auto stretch. And this is what it looks like, pretty straightforward. And I think it looks pretty good, right? Even if I zoom in, like even at the overlaps, this looks, this looks okay, right? And this is with the one X drizzle. I would probably crop down a little bit more, but this looks perfectly fine to me. Uh, you can see the file name has a 1x drizzle and it stacked 445 frames out of the 446, I believe. So one got rejected for one reason or another. So let me just look. 445, actually it stacked all 445 frames. Uh, there were no black frames detected. And if we look at the time, you know, it's 1457 and it started at 1456. So 
it, it took it took about a minute and a half to do all of the less like less than a minute and a half, about a minute and eighteen seconds. So that's super impressive. So again, this was version two dot o dot one. If you have any questions about this, do let me know. I am always open to feedback. I do have a bunch of beta testers. I think I'm going to do like a refresh of beta testers because some of the older beta testers are no longer testing. So if you are interested in becoming a beta tester, do let me know. Also check out Patreon. Everyone there gets access to all of these early and has a heavier input or more weight on the input uh, on these updates on these scripts. Thank you for watching. Thank you all for all of your support. I really appreciate it. If you'd like to support me further, again, check me out on Patreon and on Buy Me A Coffee. And if you'd like to buy some merch to help me out there as well, check me out on shop.nastrunning.com. I redid the whole thing. There's a bunch of stuff there that you can buy. Until next time, cheers guys.